Thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, I think it's a wonderful place to be in. I just recall, uh, I think it was 1996 when Abdul Mattu started this meeting. And since then, you people have really maintained this tradition. It's now 25th, I would guess, skipping the COVID year. year. So it's wonderful. Many, many congratulations to AFIC for organizing all these wonderful sessions and inviting me to give this talk. And it's uh, a little exciting for me to talk uh, with the interventionist. My love for cath lab and attachment is now just under 40 years. Uh, and I've seen growth of interventions right from day one, when very limited facilities, and I can recall many of our colleagues in UK, I was a junior doctor then, uh, the senior ones actually opted out of angioplasties because there was so much problems. They had to stay up at night in the hospitals because of the dissections and recoils and reads, uh, total closure and whatnot. And in fact, it was after the advent of the stents that everybody came back because everything was covered by the stents and the phrase went out saying we have learned to hide all our sins behind a stent. So a stent is so valuable and wonderful that it covers up so many things. Okay, now the technology is evolving and still growing. I call 20th century is a transitional period for science, really. Many innovations were coming up and 21st century, we are seeing the result of all those interventions, uh, uh, innovations and interventions. So uh, just briefly, I would go through this technology, keeping time there. So uh, FFR, fractional flow reserve, is a current standard method to define presence of ischemia. And IVAS is an invasive tool that can provide lesion geometry, plaque content, its vulnerability, extent of the disease, and diameter of the vessel. So that's the basis on which we work. So in cath lab, what do we do with these modalities? So FFR measurement involves determining the relation between maximum achievable blood flow in a stenosed coronary artery and theoretical maximum flow in a normal artery. Now, this is again, when we started angioplasties, we always used to have two pressures, one aortic pressure and one at the end of the balloon that we use, that means the gradient. And our success was, uh, we would say it is successful when this gradient disappeared. Now, with FFR cutoff value is maintained at 0 0.8. Does it work? Yeah. And of course, in the cath lab, what does IVAS provide? A lot more information. Uh, that is vessel reference diameter and percentage stenosis, lesion length, plug composition, the calcified, fibrotic, or uh, ruptured, or dissected. And, and post-PCI again, since you have uh, opened the catheter, you must do it post-PCI also. Evaluate results, final lumen, strength expansion, strength deposition, and if there is any dissection or plaque shift. Now, the, there are many trials on FFR, but these are major trials that establish the role of FFR. This is a DEFER trial in 20, uh, 2001, FAME in later on in 12, and FAME 2 in 16. FAME 3 trial was very interesting. Uh, here, multi-vessel PCI was compared with cabbage when we used FFRs. Now, this trial, was a non-inferiority trial, and it actually failed to meet the criteria for non-inferiority versus cabbage. So multi-vessel PCI uh, is feasible, <coughs> but in uh, most of the cases, cabbage is preferred. But there was, again, uh, we go back to syntax trial where we learned that uh, when the syntax scores is 22 or less, PCI is, is preferred. Even here, in multi-vessel uh, angioplasties, when syntax score was less than 22, PCI showed better than uh, cabbage. Uh, the, more of the trials, I think I'll keep going. And ultimate trial, this comparison of three-year outcome, IVAS versus angiography-guided uh, desimplantation. And this showed some uh, benefit of using uh, uh, IVAS. And IVAS guidance was associated with lower risk of target, this is not EVF, it's TVF, target vessel failure over three years. Optimal trial is the ongoing trial, which uh, we are, it's an outcome trial, 
using IVAS to see if IVAS actually improve outcomes because there is no definite randomized controlled trial uh, with IVAS showing whether it actually improves outcome in term of MACE. So it's going to enroll 800 patients, one-to-one -one randomization to IVAS and, and angiography-guided PCI. IVAS used discouraged in angio-guided angio group. IVAS used highly encouraged in IVAS-guided group. Post-procedural IVAS assessment is mandatory. So we'll have to wait for another year or two for these results. So two-year outcome. And this will confirm whether, and this trial is based on left main angioplasties. So we will learn if actually it improves uh, outcome or reduces MACE or not. Nowadays, uh, the more popular lately has been flavor trial, which we have been talking about. Uh, this is an encouragement for the use of FFR. Large trial, I'll just go very briefly. Uh, the background is the prognosis of patients with coronary artery disease is determined by multiple factors such as degree of luminal narrowing, plaque burden, plaque characteristics, physiologic significance and appropriateness of revascularization procedures. So this was the background on which it's based and objective was to compare the efficacy of FFR guided PCI strategy with IVAS guided PCI strategy in patients with intermediate coronary stenosis. These are the lesions which visually by eyeballing we classify them between 40 and 70 percent. So this is where the question is whether should we do it or should we not do it. And this was again a non-inferiority based trial. So a total number of 1700 patients were needed and because this is based on events. We won't go into that detail. And of course, standard indications, FFR had to be less than 0 0.8 for, uh, to undergo uh, PCI, and for uh, IVAS, it was 70% or more stenosis. Okay. okay, these are the characteristics, more or less the same in both groups. Here, there were certain dis uh, differences in procedures. We'll go to the outcome. Okay, now here, uh, the outcome actually proves that uh, FFR is non-inferior to IVAS when you perform FFR-guided angioplasty as against IVAS-guided angioplasties. There is a very little difference, and whatever difference there is, it's non-significant, or non-inferior, rather. Clinical outcomes, and of course, once again, primary outcomes in both, you can see. And in fact, the real advantage of FFR was that almost 30% patients in FFR group were spared from the procedure because visibly they appeared to have disease, but they did not uh, meet the criteria for angioplasty as per FFR criteria. Now you can see all the subgroups, age, sex, diabetes, clinical presentation of ACS, LED as a target vessel, multi-vessel coronary, there is basically not much advantage of one over the other. And uh, there is hardly any interaction between the two. So primary outcome as per uh, protocol analysis, it meets inferiority with p-value of 0 0.016 and uh, MACE in IVAS group 8.7 and FR group, uh, FFR group is 8.2%. Patient reported outcome more or less the same in both, be it physical limitation, angina stability, or angina frequency, treatment satisfaction, quality of life, they're both more or less the same. There are certain limitations of their studies because it used uh, intermediate coronary stenosis rather than uh, uh, severe disease, then they were both used, uh, uh, let's just move on, because time is running out. Oh, conclusion of this study based, uh, is FFR-guided gu uh, PCI was non-inferior to IVAS-guided PCI with respect to composite of death from any cause, MI, and any revascularization at 24 months after the index procedure. 
FFR guided PCI was associated with lower rate of stent implantation. This is the most important finding with FFR that we have seen since 2001. There are almost 30 percent uh, patients are saved from stents. No different uh, difference was observed in patient reported outcomes between the two strategies. So just to summarize in the last few seconds, uh, present status of both modalities FFR and IVAS appear to be complementary to each other. FFR helps prevent around 30 percent procedures as compared to angiography alone. FFR guided angioplasty shows clear advantage for patients, uh, patient outcomes as compared to angiography guided. Pre-PCI uh, IVAS examination clearly defines the lesions anatomically. IVAS provides accuracy of stent size, confirmed its apposition. IVAS uh, detects post-stent dissections and plaque shift which may not be able to see on simple angiogram. IVAS reduces amount of contrast, which is again a very, very important factor because many, many of our patients beyond the age of 65 and 70 will have deranged renal functions. So IVAS reduces radiation time, saves us. IVAS probably improves clinical outcome and survival that we'll see with optimal trial coming out in a year or so. Optimal trial should help it. And thank you very much. Sorry for moving over the time. Thank you.